Hi, in this tutorial, we're going to be looking at vector operations. Before I take a look at vector differentiation, the first part and the second part, we'll talk about how to differentiate a vector valued function. We'll talk about the difference between scalars and vectors. But in this tutorial, we're going to be starting with vector operations. If you have not checked out vector differentiation, the part one and part two, I will encourage you to check that before continuing with this one. But if you're already good with that, you can do well to continue with this. So now let's move straight to vector operations. Now, there are some things we have to note out before we continue this tutorial. The, the operator Nabla. Take note of this, we are going to make use of this very way. This, this is pronounced as Nabla. Nabla N A B L A. So the operator Nabla defined as the vector differential operator. So it's called the vector differential. operator so the, uh, this operator nabla which is called the vector differential operator is defined as so if you have nabla nabla equals to the partial derivative of x in direction of i plus the partial derivative of y in direction of j plus the partial derivative of z in the direction of k let me write this for you this is d is also d and it's also d so we define nabla as d the partial derivative of x in direction of i plus the partial derivative of y in direction of j plus the partial derivative of x z in the direction of k so using nabla the vector operators determined by this quantity what we can determine by this quantity we can determine our gradient so we can determine our divergence and we can also determine our call. So, using this operator, we can determine our gradient, our divergence, and our call. So, take note of this fairway. We are going to be using Nabla fairway in this tutorial. I know that Nabla is defined as the partial derivative of x in the direction of i plus the partial derivative of y in the direction of j plus the partial derivative of z in the direction of k. So let's get started with the meaning of gradient, divergence, and call. The second quantity we are going to be looking at is the divergence. When we look at gradient, now let's look at divergence. So let x, which is a function of x, y, z, equal to x1 i plus x2 j plus x3 k be a differentiable vector feed at each point x y z in a certain region of space the divergence of x which is defined as nabla dot x now i want us to take note of something here when we are looking at gradient we see that gradient is represented as nabla x or nabla f which is f, f is our function so in this case we see that divergence this is gradient And this is the divergence. Nabla dot f. This is divergence. So what we should take note now is that divergence will be treated like a dot product of vector. In case of gradient, our function is usually in scalar quantity, but in this case, our function is going to be a vector quantity. And since we know that our nabla is also a vector quantity, then we are going to treat the two like a cross a dot product. So we're going to take the dot product of nabla and our function f to get our divergence so let's look at how we can represent our divergence let me let me clean this off as, as i mentioned we're going to be using nabla very well so our nabla dot x is defined as i plus partial derivative with respect to y j plus partial derivative with respect to z k dot product x1 i plus x2 j plus x3 k so this is how our divergence will be represented dot product of nabla and and z and x the dot product of nabla and x so let me just do a quick reminder for us concerning dot product now we should know that if you are multiplying two vectors if you are taking the dot product of two vectors we are, we are going to have a scale as our answer let's look at just a quick example if you have a 
is equal to 2i plus 3j plus 4k. And we have b to be equal to 5i plus 3 plus 6j plus 7k. And we have to look for a dot b, which is the dot product of a and b. So what will happen here is the quantity i is going to multiply each other. The j will go for each other and the k will go for each other. So we are going to have 2 times 5, which is 10. If I multiply by i, we are going to have 1. So we are not going to write that again. Plus 3 times 6, which is 18. Plus 7 times 4, which is 24. Sorry, 28. So this is how dot product goes. Then we add this. This is 28. 28 plus 28, that's going to be 56. So this is how we do dot product. The same thing is going to be applied in the case of divergence. Eh? If you have two vectors, which is nabla, and our function which is defined as b maybe in this case so we're going to have our dot product of a and b which is the dot product of nabla and our function to be equal to a dot b and this is i will go for i j will go for j and k will go for k let's start by looking at some examples so example one says if a equal to 2x square y i minus 2 into brackets x y square plus y cube z j plus 3 y square z square k determine the divergence which is nabla dot a that is divergence of a and that is nabla dot a so we are looking for nabla dot a if you are representing divergence don't forget to put this dot that's what differentiates between divergence call and gradient so divergence is nabla dot a so as i mentioned before we have okay let's write this so we have our nabla to be equal to xi. We take note of this from the beginning that this is how we represent our nabla. This is j plus and this is k. And also we have a to be equal to 2x square y i plus 2 to bracket x y square plus y keep z j plus 3 y square z square k so we are looking for nabla dot a so this is dot product this we go for this this we go for this and this we go for this so let's start by looking at the first one which is partial derivative with respect to x of 2 x square y so it's like you're multiplying this value this by this this by this and this by this so this is the first one this multiply by this if you multiply i and i, and I you are going to have one so there's no need to put i multiplied by i there again so we simply write out what is not equal to one which is d over dx 2x square y so if you have to differentiate this with respect to x this is going to be what 2x no this is going to be 4xy hope you get that here you are going to have partial derivative with respect to x of 2x square y to be equal to 4xy and the second on which is with respect to y of 2 Let me let me multiply it through this bracket and we are going to have two x y square i sorry this is j plus two y cube z j. So what I what I did there is just to multiply just open the bracket so I multiply it through by two and also by j. So if to open this bracket we have two x y square and also j is going to be attached plus if two at comes to this place also we have two y keep z and also j will be attached so let's differentiate this with respect to y and this is going to be four x y j plus six y square z j it's very necessary we put the 
bracket there because of this negative sign so if you differentiate this with respect to y we are going to have 4xyj plus 6y square zj so now let's do the third one So now we have to differentiate with respect to z. Of three y square z square. So and this is going to be six y square z. Now I'm differentiating with respect to with respect to z. This is going to be six y square z. So now we have our first value. This is what we have first. We have this, and we also have this. So just joining these three together, we all, we have our divergence of a, which is diff a. So let me write the answer on another page. So we have diff a, which is divergence of a. To be equal to four x y minus four x y j plus six y square z j plus six y square z oh sorry for this just don't need to be attached again sorry for that our answer is supposed to be a scalar quantity so just don't need to be attached again sorry for that so we have the answer to be if you open the bracket so we have 4 x y minus 4 x y minus 6 y square z plus 6 y squared z so this we cancel out and this will be what cancel out so we now have this is interesting we now have different divergence of a to be equal to zero wow so we have the divergence of a to be equal to zero i hope we get that so we have the divergence of a to be equal to zero so why is divergence of a equal to zero there's something we have to take note so let's take note of some things so what if you have definitely to be equal to zero what does it mean so let's look at some notes. So we should know that nabla is a vector quantity, and so it acts on a vector to give a scalar. This is the first thing we are supposed to note that nabla is a vector quantity, and also our function that we are going to be giving is going to be a vector quantity. So when there's a dot product between the two vectors, we are going to get a scalar quantity. And second is that divergence will be treated like a dot product of two vectors. I've already talked about that. Divergence will be treated like the dot product of two vectors. So therefore, the result of divergence will be a scalar quantity. And whenever we have divergence to be equal to zero, this is the fourth condition. The vector is called a solenoid vector, just like what we have in the previous example. So the previous example is a solenoid vector. So whenever our divergence equal to zero, the vector is called a solenoid vector. Thank you.